Hey, what's up? Coach Brian here, criticalbench.com. Thanks for watching. You're probably watching this video in a squatted position, either on the toilet, uh, on a bus bench. I don't know. You're probably in a squatted position um, right this second. So anyways, what does that mean? Uh, what, what is a squat? Everybody squats. We, we squat from the, the day we start walking, um, pretty much the day we die. We're always squatting. We stand up, we squat, we sit down. It's part of who we are. It's genetically instilled in our bodies of movement. It's a movement pattern. It's functional. It's applicable. It's scientific. It's not just something we need to throw around loosely. So hopefully I, I, I got your attention with that. Um, so if you're walking in the gym and you're like, hey, I need to squat, you're going to go right to the, the barbell, right? Uh -uh, no, don't do that because over time we lose our ability to squat things like a sedentary lifestyle desk jobs injuries poor milk poor motor skills mechanics whatever it is there's a lot of limitations that will prevent you from squatting properly so again I, hopefully i still have your attention you need to know how to squat before you actually squat with resistance that's the take-home message so what does a perfect squat look like well i'm glad you asked that because Here's the perfect squat. Okay. You ready? Pay attention. How to squat properly. Feet a little wider than hips. See it? Toes slightly pointed out. Everything should look symmetrical. If you've got a mirror in front of you, great. Everything should look even. Right side versus left side, upper body versus lower body. Everything needs to be uniform. Look down. Toes are slightly pointed out, a little wider than our hips. Hips are pointed forward. I'm not tilted. I'm not off balance. All right, so now we're in that squat stance position. What's next? Got to squat down, right? That's how we squat. Duh. So a couple movements. Hands go up. Our center of gravity is within our belly button. This is our core. As we squat, butt will go back. Hands will help counterbalance so hands have to come up start going down you know you might have to make some fine tune you know fine tune a couple adjustments squat down knees go forward butt goes back it's all one movement chest stays up think of the squat as a vertical movement there's a line going from the top of your body down to the center uh, the bottom of your body vertical not horizontal okay so that means we got to keep our chest up Butt out, knees open, down as deep as you can go, comfortably, stand back up. Now, if you're new to squatting, so let's say you're a, a beginner and you want to incorporate squats into your routine, you go to the level of comfort that your body will allow you to go to. You don't need to get your, what people call it is, you know, your ass to the grass. Um, or you know bottoms you know whatever it, it, just as deep as you can you want to go to your level of comfort again like i mentioned just a moment ago having a sedentary lifestyle poor motor skills poor mechanics injuries all of those will prevent you from getting into a deep squat if you're not properly conditioned over time with mobility techniques foam rolling uh, recovery exercises and just practice you will be able to get that deep squat eventually again don't go right running to the barbell and thinking, hey, I need to do some squats. Let's load up a bar and do a squat. Get down the rhythm first. And this is the rhythm as it should look. Nice smooth motion. Stand back up. Very simple. But yet, even the slightest change will open yourself up to some injury, will not allow you to get deep. Watch the difference between what I do with my knees uh, compared to what you should be doing. So if I'm here, I lose a lot of power and I put a lot of strain on my knees. The reason why knees usually cave in is pe people have either one, tight hips, tight lower back, tight thoracic spine, or just weakened muscles in those particular areas. So the thing is, going through the checklist, your feet, your knees are open, your chest is up, and your butt is out. Very simple. Stand back up. Okay. So that's just a very basic 101 tutorial on how to squat. Now, let's say you're, you're 
you're falling forward a little bit. You have a nice rounded back, which is not a good thing, but you, you want to fix that in order to start progressing towards adding resistance. The best thing you can do is do a goblet squat. Now, as you can see, I've got the dumbbell pinned against my body. Lower part of the dumbbell is on my stomach. Upper part of the dumbbell is on my chest. Now watch what happens if I lean too far forward. And again, this is not what you want to do. That weight rocks forward. Hopefully you can see that. What you want to do, think both parts of the dumbbell need to stay on my body in contact with my, my body. Down. Look at the difference that makes versus here. You see the difference? Again, the squat is a vertical movement, up and down, down, staying straight up, down, nice, nice and smooth. Once you've perfected that, you always maintain a dumbbell flat right here, then you can start incorporating dumbbells, back squats with the barbell squat jumps. You have to make sure your chest is upright. This is not my opinion. This is a biomechanically studied, uh, proven position of the body. It's, it's, it's how we were designed. You have to be in that position to be the strongest and also the safest. So let's say you're, you're trying the goblet squat, but you just can't get good depth. You can't get good range of motion from your back. Your just back locks up. Another thing you can do is have a little bit of support from a column. Get in the same position. Square up, hold on right here. So now this is allowing me to sit deeper into my heels. Now if I let go, I'm, I should remain in that position. Now you might not, which is okay. This is something you can use as a mobility tool. Let go. Do this a handful of times and your body's gonna adapt into getting into that process or that position uh, naturally. Stand back up. This is also, even if you are advanced, this is a great tool to use to sinking down deeper into your heels in order to get in that deep squat position. Always keeping your back up, not hyper extending your back like that, where that almost causes some pain in my back. Pretty neutral spine for that matter, not rounded. So all these little things make a huge difference in the safety of the squat, but also transferring energy from the floor up upward. So you, you got that tool to use to progress. Now let's say I can't keep my heels on the ground. That means your feet are unstable um, and you're not able to get the strength and the power you need to lift up the weight off the floor. What you need to do is just go find some five pound plates. Uh, you can use a two by four. You can use a book. It really doesn't matter. Maybe about an inch or two inches off the ground. So you're gonna step on the plates, very simple. Square up, same body up alignment positioning. Now what's gonna happen, you squat down, you're actually gonna get a lot deeper into your squat. The reason why that is, is it takes a lot of strain off of the lower calf or the lower part of your, your ankle here, right here. So a lot of people have extreme tightness and lack of mobility in that particular area of the body, which will prevent them from getting in that deep, deep squat. The range of motion is just limited. So having a wedge under your foot, Back down, back up. So you might see a lot of people loading the bar up with plate after plate after plate, but having wedges under their feet. Now, as a strength coach, I would say, hey, let's cut that weight in half and really focus on trying to get good ankle mobility before we start lifting heavy. Because they're not doing anything with those ankles. They're just making the issue worse. They're not getting good range of motion. They're always gonna have to rely on those wedges in order to get a deep squat. So as a strength coach and also a functional movement specialist, I always say, hey, fix the issue first, even that, if that sets you back a couple weeks, couple months, and then progress with resistance. My goal for you is for longevity, not just a spur of the moment kind of instantaneous success. I want you to be able to do what you're doing now, 30 years from now, 40, 50 years from now, better, faster, stronger. Um, so I don't, I'm not telling you how to load up the bar with weight and just knocking out as many reps as you can. I want you to be actually, actually be strong and uh, functional 
not just in the squat or in the gym, but all areas of life. So that's just a little side note. I, I throw that on for free. So, okay, so now we've we've established good ankle mobility with the, the wedge. We were able to uh, open up our thoracic spine a little better We're using this column as support. We've got the dumbbell with the goblet squat established. Uh, we've, we've figured out how to, you know, keep the knees open. So that's pretty much a progression towards getting you to do a back squat. Now you can use uh, kettlebells, dumbbells, again, if you're not familiar or comfortable with the back squat, there's other alternatives, like the goblet squat. You can go double goblet squat, you can hold dumbbells right here, kind of like in a rack position, you can use a kettlebell. But all the principles still apply as, as they should, regardless of which type of equipment you're going to use. Um, so let's, let's, let's dissect the, the back squat a little, a, a little more. So back squat is just you're putting the bar on your, on, on your back, getting into the squat position. Again, as a strength coach, I've been doing this for about 15, 16 years now in professional settings, collegiate settings. A lot of people just can't squat, and, and, there, and there's a reason why. Like I mentioned a few minutes ago, they just can't. They just physically can't. So I'm not going to put them to a, under a bar and say, hey, do your best. Because I know that they're physically unable and sometimes mentally unable to get a squat perfectly. So let's say you've gone through the steps, you've gone through the wedges, you've increased your ankle mobility, um, your thoracic spine is loosened up and you're prepared to get a back squat. You're like, all right, coach, I'm ready to knock this out. I'm ready to get onto the back squat. And if, you know, as a coach or a trainer says, hey, you look good, given all those principles that uh, you kind of going through the checklist, you know, we give you a thumbs up. So what does the, the squat look like? So how do you squat using a barbell? Well, first things first, you gotta adjust the bar to your shoulders. Common sense, right? Because what you're doing is unracking the bar. So I, I prefer, you know, your collarbones here, maybe about an inch or two above that, or even just right in line. So you're, you're getting underneath the bar, and you will walk, your bar, uh, the, walk the bar away from the rack. If you have a mirror in front of you, great. You're able to make sure you're centered on the bar. You've also got these notches on both sides that you want to make sure your hands are uh, even on both sides. So you're going to unrack the bar carefully. Now you're going to get into those that good squat stance with your feet. Sh your elbows are pulled in. Your shoulders are pulled back. Chest is up. And remember, it's a vertical movement. Down. Stand back up. Very simple. Down, up. Once you've established good mechanics doing body weight, nothing should change. Let's see if I get this right. There we go. Usually turn around when you want to go in the squat rack um, so you can see where you're going. But nothing should change between a goblet squat, between a wedge squat, between a back squat, a sumo squat, whatever it is, nothing should change if you keep all those principles I just shared with you in order and of, a, of utmost priority. Now to get more weight on the bar, let's say you wanna get stronger, you wanna keep adding weight. One, you always have to warm up. You, all, you can't neglect a good warm up. Hip mobility drills to keep everything nice and loose. Um, but also what type of strength training program do you need to be on? As a strength coach with the National Strength and Conditioning Association, uh, we emphasize a high resistance, low repetition, and a high rest period uh, program. So let's say you want to improve your back squat, add more weight to the bar. Five sets, five reps, two to five minutes of rest in between. Now, yeah, you can uh, massage these numbers a little bit, but four sets of six reps with three minute rest in between. The main thing is you have to be strict. You have to follow these guidelines and you have to stay with them. Now, a lot of these other places that are like, oh, hey, do 10 squats as heavy as you can, then go do some burpees, then go do some med ball throws, then go sprint 800 meters. That's garbage. It's an absolute stupid way of getting stronger. Yeah, you might get strong, but you're gonna be in such poor biomechanically uh, shape, biomechanical shape, if uh, you're just not going to be in good skeletal structural shape. You might be great at fitness, but who wants to just be good at fitness? You want to be good at life. All right, little tangent there. But if you want to get strong and add more weight to the bar, stick to those principles, low repetitions, high resistance, high rest periods. 
you're going to be moving that bar as fast as you can, but we're not going for speed because you're going to be going near max effort and trying to get that bar up. You might be going slow as a snail, but you're pushing at max effort and at your top speed trying to get that bar up. If you stick to that program four, six, eight weeks at a time, it's very strict, very regimented, you will definitely add more uh, weight to the bar, but you'll also add some inches to those quads and uh, just feel a heck of a lot stronger, again, if you follow those principles. Um, I, hopefully, I think I, I covered everything on how to squat properly, how to use perfect form. Um, so for beginners, in a nutshell, let me summarize this for you. Don't even go anywhere near the barbell. Even bodyweight squats is just, that's all you should be focusing on, getting good mechanics. So um, feet position, slightly wider than your hips, toes pointed out, chest up. Again, if you have difficulty keeping your feet grounded or keeping your chest up, go back and uh, watch this video again in goblet squat, use the wedges, use the column for support. And once you start progressing into, into a more like, hey, this kind of feels natural, kind of feels good, then you can incorporate more resistance, higher repetitions, whatever it is. Uh, but the main thing is, I can't stress enough, in order to squat properly, you need to learn how to squat properly. And that's what I just shared with you. So that's it, that's all I've got for you on how to squat uh, for men, women, beginners, advanced. Just don't jeopardize this. I can't stress it enough as a professional. I hate seeing people get injured um, when they're doing the squats. It should be a natural movement and it should be functional in, in its approach. Other than that, I'm gonna leave you with something for free. It's a report that we wrote. It's called the 10 best bodyweight exercises of all times. You gotta, in order to get it, you gotta, under this video, there's it says show more. Click that, that's gonna drop open the video description area. You'll see a link at the top that says criticalbench.com slash bodyweight. Click that link, give us your email, and we'll send it to you right now for free. Um, yeah, just click it, you'll get it. If you're on a mobile device, you can't click that, uh, that show more button, but what you can do is click the arrow on this side. That's gonna drop open the video description area on your mobile device. That top link at the uh, you'll see there, criticalbench.com. Click that, uh, give us your email, and the report is going to be sent over immediately. Like this video, share it with somebody you know, subscribe to this video, um, check out our other videos because I know there's going to be at least a, a, a one or a dozen videos that you're going to find helpful. Interact with us too. I, I expect a question, a comment, uh, maybe even a suggestion for an upcoming video. Whatever you want to interact with us with please do so and we appreciate that. I'm Coach Brian, criticalbench.com. I thank you for watching this and we will see you soon. Have a good one. <laughs>